Hi everyone, my name is Kinga Kolar and today you are going to hear about the Republic of Kenya. You are going to get informed about its geography, the demographics, a little bit about its history, the legal system and all the taxes that you need to know before visiting Kenya. You are also going to get informed about the business etiquettes and business rules that you need to know before meeting a businessman or a businesswoman but mainly you are going to hear about investing in this beautiful African country. Okay, so let's talk about Kenya's geography. Kenya is found in East Africa, surrounded by five other African countries, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia, Tanzania and Uganda. And it has two coastlines, one is the Indian Ocean and the other one is Lake Victoria, which is, by the way, the biggest lake on the whole continent. And Kenya, Fun fact, it has a territorial dispute with Ethiopia and with South Sudan, which is the Elamit Triangle. Let's talk about a little bit of history of Kenya. So on the 1st of June in 1963, it was a big day for Kenya since that day it gained inner self-rule from the British colonial rule. And by this, the country was allowed to form its internal self-government for the first time. There are two important dates for Kenyan people. The 12th of December when um, uh, Kenya became full independent and uh, it changed its flag from the British Union Jack to the Kenyan black, red and green flag. The next year, 12 months later, Kenya became a republic. So from that date, um, the 1st of June and 12th of December are a holiday to celebrate Madaraka Day and the Amore Day. These days also represent the hard-won freedom and for people it means their freedom and destiny are in their hand and under their control. Also important to mention that uh, Kenya got divided into 47 counties. On the top of the country there is the national government and while the 47 countries uh, are run by the county governments. To be able to run the country smoothly and to make the coordinations work between the parts, the constitution in the fourth schedule determines national and county government's functions and tasks. Um, in Kenyan history, the government uh, worked with a mix of one party and a multi-party system. Since the independence, Kenya has been a multi-party democracy, but over the time the country has changed to one party state and now has changed back to multi-party that's how actually it's currently functioning since um, 1992. Um, let's check the tax overview so the organization called kenya revenue authority has the right to collect assess and account the taxes the taxes are categorized under two main parts which are the direct and indirect taxes Firstly, the indirect statutory taxes are applied when the purchase of goods are made. Um, the various taxes which belong here are excise duty, custom, levies, and VAT, although the income tax known as the part of the direct tax. Um, the direct part department deals with the income in terms of collection and assessment, and it's considered as one of the major statutory taxes. The income tax is further divided into four categories. Uh, overall, there are 10 taxes. Pay as you earn, corporation tax, value added tax or VAT, imported and exported services, custom and excise duty, custom duties, withholding taxes, advanced taxes, residential rental income tax, and penalty. Let's talk about um, the use of the various statutory taxes in Kenya. There are three. The first, revenue generation, uh, which means the government and the citizen can collect some money that later on will be spent on uh, improving the lives of many people. On the other hand, that money can be spent on satisfying any needs of the government of Kenya. And a big part of the collected taxes um, is spent on infrastructure and social welfare. The second is um, addressing externalities. It uh, generally refers to a consequence of a commercial or industrial activity that affect a third party, for instance, pollution. Thus, the government uses taxes to reduce uh, negative externalities. And the last one is the act of reprising. And there are some taxes in Kenya that are used to reprise the wrong price goods like alcohol and tobacco. 
Uh, the last part is uh, the business laws and regulations, uh, the legal system. The legal system is based on the English common law system, furthermore uh, customary law and Islamic law at the same time, which means this is a pluralistic legal system. Uh, the English common law old tradition has changed and adapted to the changes of economic, social and political trends. In this legal system, it's hard to find a solution to justice and there is no uh, unified approach of administering justice. Although in the third line of the national anthem, there is the most identified reference to justice that exactly says, justice be our shield and defender. This part will limit the discussion of justice, the Kenya constitution and legal system. It shows um, the connection between assess the justice in the country, in the legal system, and illustrates that to be able to improve the access to justice, it's essential to recognize other form of Kenya legal system. Overall, in the Kenya constitution, the justice is currently not defined. Hello, I'm Victoria, and now I'll be talking about the culture most known in the business of Kenya, more specifically the business etiquette. The most common way to greet a business partner in Kenya is with a handshake, but you should inquire about their personal life, like family, health, etc. during it. And if you're meeting a person for the first time, you should ask about their personal background. You shouldn't rush a greeting, because it's in a route if you do so. When setting up a meeting, you should do it two weeks in advance, and confirm it two three days before the meeting. You should respect the hierarchy. When you enter the meeting room, you should first greet the person with the highest status and then work your way down. And finally, you should dress appropriately with a formal dark suit being the safest option. Moving on to communication style. Kenyans are indirect communicators. They avoid conflict, especially in group situations. Therefore, during the meeting, you should converse in a polite and friendly manner and avoid getting angry. If you have criticism, you should say it in private and indirectly. Finally, negotiation. You shouldn't talk too much during the negotiation. It's preferred that the other person talks more than you. If possible, talk about price last. The later, the better. You should keep a poker face during the, the negotiation because the person with the most option wins. And finally, take your time while making a decision and giving them an answer because it's quite likely that if you take a few days to reply they will contact you with a more favorable deal okay so starting a business in kenya so at first i'm gonna start with some facts about kenya and about the market uh, so kenya's market-based economy and logistical infrastructure are considered the economic, commercial, and logistic hub of East Africa. Also, according to recent reports, Kenya gained 571 million in venture capital in 2021, which means that entrepreneurs has a lot of support from country and there's many possibilities to start a business and there's many possibilities to get money for that business if you have good idea. And also Kenya has to offer strategic, strategic location, uh, air roads, and is seen as a regional financial center. Okay, moving forward, uh, Kenya is one of the most developed countries in East Africa, which again makes it a great place to start a business. And as you can see on the slide, agriculture, forestry, and fishing is the largest sector of the economy. So again, there's many possibilities, uh, many, many sections when you can, where you can start the company, depending on what are your interests and what do you want to do for a living. And also the reason why is there are many investors coming to, uh, to Kenya is that Kenya Business Regulatory Service, BRS, uh, is still working and updating its service to make running a business easier and to make everything faster. So if you want to start a business, it's not gonna take like 10 years ago, three months, but it's gonna be 
much, much, much sooner because they really care about it and they want country to grow. And that's the reason why uh, there's more and more and more people investing in Kenya. They see great opportunities there. And another reason to start a business in Kenya and invest money there is that Kenya's economy is still growing. In 2021, it was uh, the gross domestic product was worth $110 billion, which is also important because we want to invest money in country that has still many possibilities and that is still growing. So what Kenya has to offer? Kenya has to offer macroeconomic stability. Uh, so as we could see on previous slide, uh, Kenya's economy is growing and it's stable. So this is what we want as an investor. Also, Kenya has supportive demographic division. That means that there's a lot of young people. And those are people who are willing to work, who are able to work. And also those are people who are willing to spend money or services, entertainment. Uh, so there's many possibilities to, again, open whatever kind of company, because there are people who are able to use our services. Also improvement in governments and ease of doing business. Uh, because like I said, Kenya is willing to help entrepreneurs and Kenya wants investors to invest in Kenya. And also Kenya is a secure country. Uh, we don't have to be afraid about our business there. Okay, business registration in Kenya. In Kenya, we can open two types of companies, which are local company or branch office. Uh, the difference between those two is that our local company is a company that we opened from the beginning in Kenya and that works only in Kenya. And that's what most people do. They open a local company. Uh, what's the reason why do they open local company is that when you open branch office, you have very limited possibilities to run this kind of company. And also you have to provide all the financial information and all the information from your company uh, when, from the place when it's based. So, yeah. Okay, so what do we need to do to open a business in Kenya? Uh, first thing we have to have is proposed company name and we need to have prepared three company names and government is gonna check either there's existing company using the same name or not. And they're gonna choose one of the three names. And then objective of the business, we need to provide information. What are we gonna do? How are we gonna do it? And where we're gonna do it. Next step is pretty obvious. Names of directors, contact details, email. So we have to provide all the information about ourselves. Uh, we need to also provide our ID. So in that case, it's going to be passport. Uh, yeah, that's going to be passport. And we have to also provide a passport photo. They need our photo, so we have to make a photo. Hello, and welcome to the investment side of this project. When investing, it is important to choose the right sector at the right time. Investing in Africa has quickly become the freshest place to investors. Kenya takes first place when it comes to investment in Africa, with a percentage of 35.1% of the entire continent. Now that we have established that Kenya is a good country to invest in, we can look at the best investment sectors that are found in Kenya. The country has a wide variety of investments sectors to choose from, such as energy, transportation, tourism, real estate, education, finance, agriculture, health, and manufacturing. Here is some advice for future investors. 
With a growing herbal middle income group and rising demand for deluxe outputs to satisfy the customer demands, Kenya is the largest economy in Central and East Africa, with promising growth forecasts. Many worldwide firms have established it as their regional center due to its advantages, location, and well-developed in business infrastructure, which makes it an automatic option for investors. Investors now have access to regional markets as well as the greater East African community. It ranges from wildlife to natural beauty. The country also boosts quality, social amenities such as restaurants, hospitals and entertainment venues. Investing in Kenya might be the next step to success.